So consider these. Ghouls, zombies, the IRS, you know, things that continue to be even after their demise. Isn't this stuff supposed to be reserved for scary books and movies? Well, it was the master of the genre himself, Stephen King, who said, we make up horrors to help us cope with the real ones. I don't know if he was talking about the following zombies of the animal world, but I'd definitely say they count as real-life horrors. If you're not on board with what I'm talking about, then I've got one word for you. Cockroaches. Yeah, that's one word. Have you ever tried ridding your house of these pesky little creepers? If so, then you'll understand when I say that it's nearly impossible to eradicate all of them. And that's because they're unbelievably tough. I mean, it's enough to remind you that these little critters have been around for 300 million years. Yep, they crawled the earth when dinosaurs still ruled it. And I'll bet they terrorized the dinos' households too. And when a terrible cataclysm wiped out the great reptiles and, well, most of the life on this planet, roaches somehow managed to survive. These pests can develop protection against almost anything we humans throw at them since they're omnivorous. That means they can eat anything at all, be it stale and moldy bread, rotten cheese, or even glue. They adapt very well, and wiping out an infestation of these insects can be a real battle. However, one thing that's probably the most unsettling about cockroaches is that they can easily do without their head. That's right, if a roach loses its head, it'll not only survive the injury that's fatal for most creatures, but even thrive. Well, for some time at least. So how's that even possible? The answer lies in the cockroach's body structure. You see, a roach's brain doesn't control the insect's bodily functions as much as it does in humans or other animals. For example, it doesn't send so many nerve impulses, which allows both the head and body to exist separately for some time. Roaches breathe through tiny holes or spiracles in each of their body parts, and that's not controlled by the brain either. So, when a cockroach is beheaded, its body can still react to simple things, breathe, and even run on its own. It gains much less information than it would with the brain present, but it can still survive for about two weeks until it succumbs to dehydration. Roaches need their head to feed and drink, so when they lose this ability, they only live for as long as they have enough food in their belly to last. You can almost pity them, you know? Mm, almost. You may not share that sentiment with the next resilient creature on my list. Fruit flies can also live without their head, but that pretty much doesn't even phase them at all. A headless fruit fly can survive for several days seemingly without even noticing. It can fly upright, crawl, and even try to mate with other flies. I think that's where the old saying, I lost my head over her, came from. A headless fruit fly, however, is almost never a success, because female flies seem to prefer suitors with, well, their head intact. Hey, wouldn't you? Such a crazy thing happens because fruit flies, in fact, have an additional brain hidden inside their body. I want one of those. And even without eyes to see, flies navigate the air well enough thanks to their sensory organs. So basically, they don't even need their head apart from feeding. Okay, I get that creepy crawlies might somehow be immune to losing a head. I mean, they're just so far from us from a biological point of view. But what about animals? Surely nothing that we can imagine as a proper member of the animal kingdom can live without a head. If you think so, then let me tell you all about the toad. Now, not that weird guy in homeroom. Like any amphibian, toads are ruled by their brain, which makes decisions for them and memorizes stuff. But there was an interesting case that left the scientific world speechless for a long time before it was explained. In 2016, Jill Fleming, a student at the University of Massachusetts, found a toad in the woods that was virtually headless. It's unclear what happened to the poor little guy, but it didn't seem to mind its unique situation. In fact, 
It was hopping around merrily enough and even croaked a little bit with what was left of its mouth. Fleming shared a video of her discovery on Twitter, and it went viral, the story even finding its way to National Geographic. How is it still alive, you ask? Well, Fleming herself offered a pretty plausible explanation that was later backed by a lot of scientists. Whatever took the toad's head off hadn't touched the brain stem, which is responsible for many simple reactions. If the stem is okay, the animal can live on its instincts and reflexes, which aren't controlled by other parts of the brain. So, if there's not too much blood loss, the head isn't necessary for it to keep going. Sadly, however, the headless animal won't be able to feed. And this unfortunate condition also makes it very vulnerable to predator attacks. Although, if some kind soul would take such a creature home and perhaps tube feed it, it might just survive for years. That's exactly what happened to one chicken in 1945. I'll spare you the gory details, but basically the bird survived what otherwise would have made the little guy dinner that night. Chop chop. Again, given that a chicken's body isn't entirely controlled by the brain itself, this one, who gained widespread fame as Miracle Mike the Headless Chicken, went on to live for another year and a half without its head. The brainstem and coronary artery were unharmed in the process of beheading, so the bird managed to survive. And it looks like the farmer had a change of heart, because the family decided to keep it alive through liquid feeding. While cases of toads and chickens living after losing their heads are both sad and terrifying, these animals are totally harmless otherwise. However, there's one creature that can even attack you after it's been severed in half, and it's a snake. Now, snakes aren't inherently hostile beings. They'd rather slither away from you to avoid trouble versus attacking first. But if you're stepping on their territory, they will defend themselves. And it just so happens that they see your yard as their turf. So what do you do when you find a venomous snake in your backyard? Right, back away slowly and don't mess with it. But there are some, let's say, less informed individuals who will take a shovel and attack the serpent, aiming to cut its head off. But not only is this rather cruel, it also doesn't do a person much good, because if they make the mistake of picking the head up with their bare hands, it will bite. Surprise! In fact, snakes retain their biting reflex for up to an hour after their head is severed from the body. And while a live snake would only release a small part of its venom and run away, leaving you a chance at survival, a beheaded one would give you all it has left in its venom sacs. And that's an awful lot. So whatever you're up to, never ever touch the head of a snake, whether it's attached or not. Unless you're just a complete bozo and then you're on your own. Well, all I've told about is creatures that keep on living without their heads. But are there ones that can be called real zombies of the animal world? In fact, there is one, and it'll dance for you on your plate, if you can stand it. A Japanese dish called odori don, or dancing squid, relies entirely on the effects of the soy sauce. A squid is served on your plate without any signs of life, and make no mistake, it's not alive. However, when you pour soy sauce over its body, it starts squirming right before your eyes. The thing responsible for this is the special structure of the squid's nerves. They react with the sodium in the soy sauce, making the muscles contract. This is what causes the squid to dance before you eat it. Hey, would you be able to munch on it afterwards? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. The ability to live after you shouldn't have survived is amazing, albeit a little creepy. But can you believe there's a creature that's virtually immortal? You heard me right, it can live for as long as it wants. This creature is a jellyfish, called Toratopsis dohorni, also known as the immortal jellyfish. Generally, these fish start their lives as tiny larvae, which then produce a colony of polyps attached to the ocean floor. When this colony grows, it gradually becomes a fully developed jellyfish. 
The immortal jellyfish is the same in this regard with one important difference. If it's stressed out, it can revert itself to the polyp stage. After some time, it goes back to its adult form, and theoretically, this process can go on indefinitely. It's basically like you or me going back and forth between being a kid and an adult. Imagine going back to your childhood years at will. Ah, the good old days. I can only envy this jelly. As long as I don't have to go through middle school again. Well, Brightsiders, here's a tricky question for you. What would you do if you could live forever? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a like if you found it interesting, share it with your friends, and click that subscribe button to stay on the bright side of life.